today I am going to share with you how I have gotten to where I am in my life. And no, I'm not talking about making a YouTube video in my closet. That That's an anomaly. My son fake sick from school today. He's 12 years old. He's running around downstairs like the Tasmanian devil because he has so much energy in him. And this is the only place I can go where it's quiet and I can film a YouTube video. So I apologize for the background. But you know, I could have called this video my anti-aging lifestyle. I do have one that's a bit similar called How I Age Backwards. But really, I like to think of myself as aging well. And I think it's such a healthy, positive mindset to have. It is an absolute pleasure. It's an honor to be sitting here today at 40 years old making this video. And in doing so, I do think of all the women who never made it to their 30s, who never made it to their 40s, who didn't get to see their kids grow up or have to deal with their son faking sick from school. You know, and I have a lot of respect for them. And I have a lot of respect for myself and my own body that's been with me for these 40 years. I love my body and I honor my body. And so I think aging well is just the best mindset to have. So this is a video where you probably wanna pause it, grab a pen and paper, just in case I have any ideas, anything I say just inspires you, you wanna write it down. And when you come back, I will still be here and let's just jump right into it. Hi, my name is Lauren O'Connell and I am the beauty editor at Cosmopolitan Middle East Magazine. I've been living in Dubai for the last 15 years of my life and it has flown by. Both of my kids were born here. It's been great and I'm originally from Milford, Connecticut, USA. I go back to the US every summer with my kids and my husband and my kids always have an all-American summer between Connecticut and Minnesota where my husband's from. But most of the time during the year, we're here in the Middle East. And, you know, being in the Middle East for 15 years and having such fair skin, I feel like I've done a great job in taking care of my skin. I understand skincare ingredients. Actually, my background is in uh, biomechanical engineering. I have a bachelor's in that and I have a master's of science in nursing. But my heart was always in beauty and when I was in my university days studying engineering because my parents wanted me to, uh, my I just imagined what would it be like to write for a magazine, to be in a magazine, and all my free time, I would be buying and reading every single word in Cosmo and Glamour and Allure magazine and all those magazines. And today I write for one, I'm the beauty editor for Cosmo. So I think no matter what happens in life, it's like a GPS and, we always get pushed back or we always find our way back to where we're meant to be, to be on our true life path. So getting into how I age well, if you have any tips for anything you do, by all means, share them down below or any thoughts, any comments. You know, let's make this a nice supportive place for women and where we can really just get ideas from each other that we can implement in our own lives. There's so much just hate and negativity out there. And I really just don't want this video and this my YouTube channel to be a part of that. So by all means, let's share and let's just all grow together. Why not? I We need it, honestly, we need it with all the garbage that's just out there in the world. So first and foremost, let's talk about skin because you know I'm such a skin person. and. Ingredients for skincare to age well. Goodness, there's so many. So first and foremost, I will put everything that I'm talking about, I'll link it down below, um, any products, everything. So if there's anything that you want to uh, purchase or take a look at, just know if you click on the link, there is going to be a small commission I will get if you choose to buy anything. But of course, there's no pressure at all. So vitamin C, retinol, the, these antioxidants have worked wonders for my skin. Vitamin C really brightens the skin and it reduces, it minimizes the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. I've been using it every day for probably at this point a good six, seven years of my life and my skin is incredibly dry. And you know, I do have some lines underneath, but they're not as deep as they used to be. And I will just say before I talk any much longer, because I always get so many hate comments about this, 
Botox, please don't say, oh, her only thing she does is Botox. That is so not true. I do have a little bit of Botox. I have 10 units on each side of my eyes. My doctor calls it baby Botox. And I also have 15 units between my eyebrows where the 11s would be. I have this because I did notice a little bit of crow's feet starting to come out. And it just helps to eradicate the crow's feet while the Botox is active. And it prevents the lines from forming, from the creases from forming. If you choose to use Botox, if you don't choose to use Botox, either is fine. It's your, it's your body and you're a sovereign being. You can do with it as you like. As far as fillers go, I don't have any fillers. I do use red light therapy, which I am the biggest fan of, and I think everyone should be using red light therapy. It's mass and they, there's a red light LED mass that I, you know what, let me go grab it. I should have been a little bit more prepared for this video, but the true story is my son was in here talking to me before and I got distracted and I forgot to grab all of my things. So this is a red light neck and chest plate. And this has red light and near infrared light. It's going to penetrate deep into the skin. And when it does, it's going to stimulate collagen production. Now it does have a strap. So when I'm laying down and using it, it's not going to be flailing all over the place. I just didn't feel like strapping it in right now. But this is great if you have crepey, uh, like crepey skin on your neck. If you really want to firm up the skin, thicken up the skin on your neck and your chest, this is the way to go. It's going to make the skin look a lot plumper and it's going to just lick, make the skin look a lot healthier. I like to use it on my hands as well. So I do this at night if I'm watching, even if I'm reading a book or I'm scrolling on Instagram, watching a movie with my daughter, I just do this, it's 10 minutes for each body part you put it on. And that's all it is, that's all it takes. So this is the neck and the chest. And then I also have one for the face. Now I get a lot, and this is not sponsored by the way, this is something I truly love. And you know what, actually I shouldn't even say it like that. If you've noticed, I never do sponsored videos on on YouTube because, or Instagram, because I, I just don't, they're not products I would stand by. I would never use them in my real life. So I just, you know, I always say no to all that money, but my integrity is worth so much more. But this brand, Current Body, I have tried out so many different LEDs. I get them from be having a YouTube channel, from having an Instagram account, and of course, for being the beauty editor for Cosmo. And in all the ones I've tried, all the different products, the different makes, the different brands, Current Body is my absolute favorite. So I do this one on my face at nighttime and just put it on there and I put the light on. Now it does have goggles that I usually wear it with just to protect my eyes, but that's what it is. And this is just going to kickstart that collagen and really keep my skin looking so plump, so healthy, so supple, and really just nice and thick. So this is huge in my skincare, my aging well routine. And I firmly believe that if you're on the fence about getting an at-home LED system or going to an aesthetic clinic and getting lasers, start with the LED. You'll get so much more out of it. I do have those linked down below and I do have a discount. I had asked them for the discount because I just said to them, look, you're my favorite brand and the only one I really wanna talk about. So please give me um, a discount code so I can share it with people. So that's linked down below if it interests you. But if you do wanna have that plumped up, thicker looking skin, if you notice the skin on your hands is really starting to look thin, your neck is starting to look a little bit crepey, really think about it and I say go for it. Now, in terms of the ingredients for skincare, I put a bunch under here. We're underneath my clothes. Getting back to that vitamin C, this is what I use. It's the CEO Glow by Sunday Riley. Now I have mature dry skin and you might think to yourself, okay, she's only 40, it's not mature skin. In the beauty industry, it is. And this just not only incredibly moisturizes my skin, but this is a wonderful derivative of vitamin C. It's called tetrahexyldesyl ascorbate. 
and it works incredibly well to eradicate that hyperpigmentation, to smooth out those fine lines and wrinkles and really brighten the skin. I use it every single morning. I'm also a big fan of retinol and hopefully I grabbed a retinol. Nope, I didn't. One more second. Here it is. This is by Dermalogica and it's the Dynamic Skin Retinol Serum. What a fantastic, fantastic product. In this product, there is hydroxypinacolone retinoate, which is also known as HPR, and it is a retinoic acid. So when you put this on your skin, it's going to immediately bind to the retinoic acid receptors, meaning it's going to work right away. Weaker retinols, they take longer to work, and that's because they have to undergo some chemical reactions within the body to be able to convert, to be able to bind to those retinoic acid receptors. So not only is this going to work Work right away but this one has is infused with so many great hydrating and skin soothing ingredients there's no flaking there's no irritation there's just results and it's going to really boost up that collagen that elastin firm up that skin smooth out those fine lines and wrinkles retexturize skin and just make skin nice and smooth i don't have any um filters on this video there's no edits on this video i am literally in my dark closet and you can probably see the reflection in my eyes i have one window in front of me that's it so what you see from we and how i look this is this is the real deal and i'm not saying that to say oh look i look great i'm just being honest with you so you don't think that i'm trying to show you all these things that don't actually work because what really is working is the filters not my that's not my style i also am a big fan of lactic acid this is by good genes this is the all-in-one lactic acid and lactic acid is a great ingredient especially if you have dry skin it's going is a chemical exfoliant. So you don't want to use any exfoliants that are have grains in them. Anything that's granular to rub on your skin. That's the old school, the old style way of exfoliating. Nowadays you want to use a chemical exfoliant. If you have oily skin, look for a glycolic acid. For dry skin, look for a lactic acid. When you put these on your skin, it's going to unglue the dead skin cells and they're going to slough off and you're going to have fresh skin revealed underneath. The lactic acid also increases the production of ceramides in the skin. That's going to strengthen your skin's barrier, hold in that moisture, and it's also going to make your skin more elastic. So this is a great product. I use it all over my body. I use lactic acid all over my body about once a week just for a full body exfoliation. You also want to just make sure you're using products that contain ceramides, products that which are what I just explained with the keeping your the moisture in. Peptides are going to really firm the skin and hydrators, occlusives like shea butter and emollients like vitamin E. These are all going to really nourish the skin, keep the skin nice and healthy, soft, supple. And it's part of, for me, aging well. And I stay away from anything that has fragrance in it, anything that has perfume in it and drying alcohols. When it comes to fragrances in skincare products, in my opinion, they should never be there. Usually they're there to, number one, mask a scent that's not pleasurable, that the product naturally smells like, or two, to make the product seem more luxurious, or to scent it so women are more apt to buying it because they like the way it smells. The problem is with fragrances is that you have no idea what's in that fragrance ingredient because it's considered a trade secret. So companies could have thousands of things you would never want anywhere near your skin in those ingredients and then you're rubbing that on your face every morning and night. So I stay away from any fragrances and perfumes. Um, also lasers. So I do like getting lasers and I said, I think I said earlier, I get maybe one to two lasers a year. I'm also a big fan of the occasional facial and that's mostly just to remove the blackheads in my skin. Sometimes I get them around my nose area or occasionally even down here. So I don't have them often, but when I do get a facial, I always make sure they do extractions and I never ever do the extractions at home. Um, in terms of body care, I put SPF, and it's this particular one, 
all over my body every single day, including my face all the way down to my toes and everywhere in between. This is by Supergoop. This is their Play Sunblock. It is a broad spectrum sunblock with an SPF 50. And it also has tons of just moisturizing and um, emollient type of ingredients in it to really soften and smooth the skin but you wanna make sure you use a broad spectrum sunblock on your skin every single day. And a broad spectrum is gonna counteract both the UVA and the UVB rays. The UVA rays are the ones that silently age us and they can penetrate through windows. So even if you're planning on staying indoors and it's a cloudy day, you still need to use your broad spectrum sunblock. I use mine 365 days a year and it is the number one thing that is of importance in my aging well journey. It is all about the sunblock. So make sure you use, use yours. And I'll link the ones I use down below. Um, when I am driving, I wear driving gloves. They're just from Amazon. They're not the cutest thing in the world, but I don't care. The skin on the back of the hands is thin. I did notice a little while ago, I was starting to get a few spots. So I started wearing the gloves when I was driving in my car. And if you do get your nails done like I do, those UV lights are horrendous. Wear gloves, UV gel gloves, I would say, UV nail gloves. You can get them off Amazon. Wear them when you're getting your nails done. Now, my nails are my last vice, and I know I need to get rid of them. I haven't done it yet. I love my nails. They are literally the last thing I do that's bad, but for the time being, I do wear the gloves when I get my nails done. And also get a SPF stick for the hands. I have a super goop one, I'll link it down below. I love to just rub it on the backs of my hands. When I'm out and about, I leave one in my car, I leave one at home if I'm gonna go for a walk my dog around the community, whatever, and just keep reapplying it throughout the day because we wash our hands so much that the sunblock does eventually wear off, it comes off, and we want to make sure we reapply it. So that's everything for skincare. Oh, don't forget to put an SPF lip balm on your lips a couple times a day just to keep your lips protected too. Sometimes we take such good care of our skin and we completely forget the lips. So make sure you um, put something on your lips every day. When it comes to the wellness aspect, which is first and foremost, the body. Now with, I will say, aging well for me it's as much inner as it is outer and i will get to the inner stuff in a little bit and make sure you watch to the end because there are some big ones i'm going to mention but just to keep going i guess you could say with the outer is uh the diet i ate like a 20 year old for a very long time and i'm five foot eight and last this time last year i stepped on the scale and i weighed 175 pounds and i was really shocked because normally I always weighed 145 pounds and I couldn't believe I had gained 30 pounds. It came out of nowhere. Now, I didn't mind the way my body looked. I mean, granted, I couldn't fit into any of my clothes. I didn't think I looked bad by any means. I thought actually I looked nice and curvy, but it made me scared that I had gained that much weight without even really realizing it. So since then, I have lost 21 of those pounds. I have nine more to go and I am going to get back to my original weight that's been my baseline my entire life. If I could talk to myself a few years ago, I would say when you notice those first four or five pounds coming on out of nowhere, correct it. And I just didn't do that. So going forward and living my life, I do weigh myself once a week. And if I do see, well, I'm trying to lose weight now, but when I see myself starting to gain, that's when I just put the brakes on anything that I'm eating that I don't necessarily need to be eating and get my weight back in check because I haven't hit perimenopause yet, but from what I understand, most people in perimenopause say that the weight loss is just very difficult and it's just better to get your body the way you want it before you enter that phase of life. Um, in terms of exercising, I need accountability <laughs> and if I work out in the house by myself, especially doing a YouTube video, a weights video, I just, I slack. I just slack big time. So when I go to workout classes, it's, I know I'm getting that 45 minutes of workout in 
and there's accountability because there's the instructor there and other people in the class and it pushes me to go a lot harder. So I try to work out five times a week um, and I do a combination of strength training and cardio. So I love to do spin classes. I like Pilates reformer. I like hit classes that are combined weightlifting with cardio. And I also really like, uh, there's one I take called booty burn. <laughs> That's a good one. And so is the Pilates and um, what did I do this summer? Pure bar. Oh, bar. I like bar. So, you know, I switch it up. I found exercises I really like. I found exercise classes I like. I am a very feminine person. I don't like the heavy masculine stuff. It's just not me. It's not my personality. So I know this about myself. So instead of setting myself up for failure and doing these workouts that I know I'm never going to do, like boot camp, for me, what works so much better is the more feminine workouts. And I really like them and I stick to them. And I also try to do a little bit of fasting. Now, my life is sometimes structured to be a bit difficult with that in terms of at nighttime, I do have sometimes beauty events that I have to go to. So I, or dinners, stuff like that. But on a normal day-to-day -day basis, I try to stop eating around 7 p.m. And I don't eat food the next day until about 11 a.m. So there is some fasting happening there. I'm not, I just don't believe in being really strict about things. I think that always, for me, causes me to fail. I do really well with just a little bit of wiggle room. So I try to stick with that as a fasting schedule. But if I'm hungry one morning, I'm not going to be sitting there with my stomach burning and just thinking of how starving I am, I'm going to eat something. So, you know, I take everything in moderation, I guess you could say. Now, with that being said, I started a, a, a very, unbeknownst to me, a very big journey to myself. And I started this about five years ago. And I realized that I had been living my life for so long trying to people please and really making myself uncomfortable time and time again in order to not make people other people uncomfortable and I put everyone in front of me at all times and I did that because I was basically raised to to be like that I think a lot of us were in the 80s and you know to inconvenience yourself to not be disruptive and to be compliant and all these things and they get etched into you like for example brushing i brush my teeth too hard and my dentist always yells at me and i just say i know it's when i was a kid they were always like brush 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 but you know these you, we have to unlearn a lot is what i'm saying we have to kind of deprogram ourselves and that's something that i started doing and i you know, I've had several spiritual coaches and mentors and I've been on this amazing journey. I would not change it for the world. When you start doing this and raising your own personal vibration to raise your, you're raising your own frequency, there's things that are of a lower frequency that aren't going to resonate with you anymore. They could be friends. They could be certain places you don't like to go to anymore that you still love to go to like different bars or restaurants anything like that and it can also be different things that you're consuming and for me my body just straight up rejected caffeine and alcohol and i was the girl that lived on her cappuccinos and her savion blanc i love the two of them and you know they were they were things that i just really enjoyed in life but I went through three days where I would have my normal cappuccino and I was so ill afterwards. I felt like I had the worst throbbing, just hangovers of my life from the cappuccinos. And I realized my body was saying no more of this because although the caffeine does give you that lift, it really does bring you down. And alcohol, of course, does as well. And so my, I couldn't even bring myself to drink it. And I was really shocked by it because I, I love these drinks. But from with talking to my spiritual uh, gu guider, guidance, my spiritual guides, I guess you could say, I just realized that my body was saying no more. Like you're elevating yourself so much, you just, you don't need it. And not that I needed it, but you know what I mean. So I haven't had uh, caffeine since... 15 months ago and alcohol I haven't had in 10 months 
Now, I did say to my friend, I'm meeting her this week for a beauty event or it's next week. I can't remember which week it is. I said, you know, I think I'm going to have a glass of wine. And she's like, are you okay? What's going on? What happened? And I'm like, nothing's wrong. I just, I, I miss the social aspect of it, you know? But I can't actually, I don't think I will because I just can't picture myself drinking a glass of wine. But not drinking wine and not drinking caffeine is amazing for the body. The body thrives it is thriving. My body is thriving and I just look so much better. I never wake up feeling like I have a you know sore head. I don't feel like I need something to make me wake up in the morning. I just, I feel like I wake up like a Disney princess. I'm just like, ah, you know, I'm just, I'm just ready to start the day. And if you can cut back on them. I'm not saying you have to be as extreme as me, but if you can cut back, your body is going to love it. And also it will decrease the amount of cortisol in your body, which is the stress hormone. And I did already say before, but just staying in a healthy weight. And when you see yourself gaining weight, you need to just correct it. You've got to correct it. I have made a list just so I don't forget anything because there's so many things I'm mentioning. I also wanted to just say, I just mentioned cortisol and cortisol management, which is managing that stress hormone is so important because when our cortisol is, you know, really high, it can cause us to gain weight. It can cause insomnia, pre-diabetes, anxiety, and depression. And so, you know, all of this stuff is so interconnected. And I just feel like there's not enough information for women out there, or it's just, it's not mainstream enough. And I just feel that we got to start these conversations and it can't just be from somewhere boring that no one's, that everyone's going to glaze over like WebMD, not, not trying to be offensive to WebMD, but you know what I mean? You need to hear it from friends, from women that I would talk to my friends, just like how I'm talking to you right now. So moving on, hair. Now the hair can really, how we, how our hair, our hair can age us. Not taking care of our hair properly, it can age us. And one of the things I've noticed is actually my hair has been really thinning out at the temples. So I'm just starting regain, which is like a feminine Rogaine. And I'm just putting in my hair every night and every morning and just rubbing it in a bit just to uh, kickstart that hair production right here. I remember years ago, a friend said to me that her mom looked so young. Her mom was in her, I think, 70s. And she said, you know, for years, she's just been putting these oils right here every single night and rubbing them in. She's like, that's what makes the big difference. And I thought to myself, wow, you know what? She's right. That's not something I would think about, but it, a fuller head of hair does make you look more youthful, or you could say it does make you look like you're aging better. You're aging well. So get yourself some Regain or one of those oils and just massage it in and really try to kickstart that hair growth if you notice and if you want to, of course, but if you notice that your hair is thinning out. Um, in terms of eyebrows, don't pluck your own eyebrows. Go get that done professionally. Your eyebrows frame the face. They are so important to your beauty and your looks. So get your eyebrows professionally done and just you know, make room in your budget for it. And it's really gonna change how you look. Also in terms of coloring, I mean, I get my hair colored at this point like every three weeks because my hair is just, I'm so gray, but get your hair professionally colored. Don't do a box dye. It just, you can always tell when it's a box dye. It just doesn't look as good. And the hair sometimes looks a little bit greenish. If if, if it's expensive, if you feel like it, it's a little bit out of reach, find the, um, like find the coupons online where you can, you know, get them for cheaper, or you could go to the schools where this, uh, what am I saying? You can go to the schools for the, uh, the hairdressers, hairstylists, I'm sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Hairstylists, hair colors, and training, they work underneath the supervision of their teachers and get your hair done that way. It's a little bit cheaper than what you would pay for in a mainstream salon, and you're still going to not be using that box dye. 
Also, make sure you're using the right products. And I'm talking about using hair serums. You know, before you blow dry your hair, use a hair protectant so you don't fry your hair. Use shampoo and conditioner that are really enriching, like salon grade. And that's gonna make a big difference on your hair. There's so many just cheap additives. There's lots of silicones in the products that you can find at the grocery store. And it's really gonna make a difference in how you look and how, how people, or not even how people perceive your aging, because who cares what other people think, but how you feel about your hair and your own aging well journey. So lastly, uh, change your pillowcase every night if you can, I do. Um, try to sleep on silk or something that's vegan friendly, like a vegan silk type material. And also change your sheets on your bed twice a week. That's something I do and it just keeps everything healthy. I feel like it's better for my skin, it's better for my health, for everything. So make sure you're changing your, sh your sheets and also your pillowcase. Now, lastly, let's talk about the the mind connection, the mindfulness, the mind, body, soul, the, the soul. And let's talk first about mindset. Now, I said earlier that I, I like the mindset of aging well versus anti-aging or even aging backwards. I mean, that I said as a cute thing, but some people took that a little bit too far. But aging well is just such a beautiful way to look at yourself and look at your life's journey. And you know, if you have limiting beliefs, if you have self-deprecating thoughts, it's really time to let them go. And I think a lot of us experience traumas as children and things that, you know, aren't some of them are not even that big of a deal. It could be just that someone on the playground told you you know, you look ugly or you have ugly shoes or something like that and it sticks with you and you don't let it go as a child and somehow it's manifesting still in a, your adult life and you just need to let these things go. And for me, I learned how to let things go through number one, following accounts on Instagram, like spiritual type accounts that really have great information on sort of this journey to yourself and also working with a spiritual coach and just seeing where my limiting beliefs were. And those are beliefs that you might have like, oh, I can't be a beauty editor. I'm already 40 years old and it's too old. And that's a limiting belief because look, I'm doing it right now. And you know, I'm for, I'm going to be 41 this month and I'm a beauty editor for a, a magazine that's more Gen Z focused, but I'm doing it. And if I said to myself, I'm not going to even try to get this job because of my age, that would have been my own limiting belief because I got the job. And we do that all the time, all the time. You know, um, if you say to yourself, Oh, I'll never get out of this dead end job or I'll never be able to afford this vacation or I'll never be able to, you know, do anything. Whatever you want to put in there, it's all limiting beliefs because the reality of the situation is you can actually do anything you want to do as long as it serves your highest good. If you want it and it's there and it exists you or it doesn't exist and you want to create it, as long as it serves your highest good, you can get there and you, the universe will make a way for you. And you have to be open to receiving it and it will be there for you. And when you open yourself up to this and you realize that there is a bigger plan for you, that no matter what, you have not made decisions that are going to you know, stall or ruin the rest of your life, everything and everyone, um, you know, as long as you're not really hurting anybody, you, you can, you can have the life that you, I'm sorry, when I said that, I was thinking of like someone in prison that had killed somebody. But I mean, that's a different story. But you know, if you find yourself in say having a career that you're not happy in and you have three kids, you have a mortgage and you think to yourself, well, how am I going to, you know, I rely on this job. How am I going to make this happen? Trust me, you can get out of it and do what you want to do with your life and make more money than you're making right now you can make it happen. If that little feeling is inside of you, that little thought is inside of you, you can make it happen. And actually I wrote a book. It's called Manifest Like Lauren because I realized that I can bring anything I want into my life, literally anything I want. And to the point where I can think of something and 
my doorbell will ring and it will be brought to me. It's amazing how it works. And my ebook is down below in the description box and it's $29. I share with you my exact formula, everything I do. And I, one second, and I, I can manifest, I can bring anything I want into my life. I have done the craziest, most amazing things. I just manifested a trip to the Maldives. I went to the Maldives for free and stayed at two five-star resorts and had for a week and had the best time. All right, sorry, one second. My son is here. Come here. Yes. Say hello. Hello. He's the one that fake sick from school today. All right, yeah, don't pull me, honey. I'm gonna go um, get a football picture with my friends. All right. Look what socks I found. Very nice, okay. Um, also, um, I made the chat about the party. I made a chat with everyone. Okay, I'm gonna text the mommies later. Can you text them like tonight? Yes. Okay, Bye. sorry about that. So, so I, uh, all right, go. <coughs> sorry about that. He ended up talking to me for a few minutes, so I had to cut the video. But like I was saying, you can manifest your dream life too. And I am no more special than you. And you are just as worthy as every single other person on this planet. And you deserve to have the life that you want to have and your dream life. You deserve everything. And you know what? Knowing that and acknowledging that is part of aging well. And yeah, bad things happen to everybody. But you can manifest the good things you want to bring to you. So if that sounds like something that's kind of interesting to you, by all means, check out my book in the link down below. Also, I just wanted to say with the traumas, you know, if you find yourself dating the same guy over and over again, it's the same thing keeps happening to you, or you go into work and you have a new manager and it's the same issues as the last manager, this is some sort of trauma this is like a, a trauma thing you have going on. It's related to life lessons. There's something you're not learning. And that's where a spiritual coach comes in, where you can start to really work with a spiritual coach to figure out what those lessons are and how to address them, to learn the lesson and just let it go and not have it in your life anymore. And that's part of the aging well process because who wants to deal with other people's garbage and to be dealing with the same thing over and over again? And I've told this to a few of my girlfriends, some of them, they just keep dating the same type of guy. And I'm saying, what is the lesson you're not learning? You have to figure that out because that is your key to finding the right guy. And so also there is grounding and grounding yourself is just really making sure you're here in the present moment. You know, if you're always thinking about the future and how much better things will be, or, you know, in a couple years, or you're kind of, your mind's always just sort of already living in the future, or if you're always thinking about the past, especially if you're thinking about things you did in the past that embarrass you, or even things that were great in the past that aren't like that anymore, like maybe an ex, just, Think to yourself, the past is insignificant. It's over and done with. Everything that's important is in the here and now and ground yourself into this moment. That's how you're gonna be able to manifest better and that's how you're really gonna be able to design the life you want to have. It's all about the here and now. Another thing if, to help age well is actually sex. And I think that you know being sexually active is such a good thing for our bodies and if you don't have a partner or that's not really an option for you, do self-pleasure. Get yourself a vibrator and get down to business because when you do, your, your body is going to have those endorphins going, you're going to feel great, and that is, I think, part of us as goddesses. Us women, we are goddesses, and we need to have these experiences, and we need to have these feel-good hormones running through our bodies, and sex is a beautiful expression of that. So if you feel that your sex drive is going down, my suggestion to you is to start having more sex in your life, and then you'll feel that it's starting to pick back up. It will start to pick back up. I'm also big on unfollowing accounts on social media that don't make me feel good. And sometimes there are accounts where they're just, it, it's kind of just a negative account to begin with, or I don't like accounts where I see any sort of animal abuse. I'm very sensitive about animals, and I don't even like to see things like SeaWorld or um, 
zoos or, you know, if I see someone that's visiting one of those places, ugh, I just, these types of, th I just feel very sensitive towards the animals and I don't think they any belong in captivity. And so anything that doesn't make me feel good, I unfollow. And honestly, it feels great to do that because out of sight, out of mind. And while I still do, of course, I do do things I personally on the side towards, uh, and for animals, I at the same time don't want to support an account that is supporting any type of animal captivity, if that makes sense. So it's not that I'm saying, oh, I'm just going to pretend it's not happening. It's just things that I don't want to see that I can help in my own way on another medium. Um, there's people, there's toxic people I know, and I just don't like to see their accounts. So I unfollow them. There's no rule that says I have to unfollow them. I have to follow them. If you feel that you have to stay followed just to keep the peace, mute the person so you're at least not seeing their posts showing up in your feed or on your stories or their stories showing up or anything like that. So just, I'm being on the out of sight, out of mind. And I'd love to follow accounts that really inspire me, accounts that I find entertaining or accounts where I feel like I'm learning things. I love to follow spiritual accounts and just feel good quotes those are the types that that's my thing and i love to follow beauty accounts some beauty accounts and you know i i just like that because it uplifts me and it doesn't make me feel like i'm on social media and lowering my own vibration and also you have to i in my opinion <laughs> part of aging well at 40 years old is be really discerning with the people you allow in your life I have been for years, the person who has, and I, I call them charity friends, <laughs> but people that are just walking red flags that, you know, all my other friends can't stand them, but I'm friends with them. And, you know, just these people that you know you really shouldn't be friends with, but somehow you get sucked into a friendship and you don't have great boundaries and you know you're you're you almost feel like you're doing an act of charity by being friends with them i recently had a friend like that and i got so fed up with this person they were trying to use my name to elevate their own self and i just thought to myself you know what enough is enough and I, if I had been honest with myself, I knew this about this person five years ago, but I just ignored it. And now I just, I just had enough. I reached my boiling point and I just had to end the friendship. I just couldn't do it anymore. It was bad for my mental health. It was bad for my, my image. I didn't want to be associated with this person. This person was doing things that I don't agree with. So you know, it's important to really find your tribe, but also to just let go of the friendships or there any type of relationship, situationship, whatever, that is no longer serving you. You got to let that go and you just have to be strong. You have to hold the boundary and you got to cut, cut them off in whichever way you want to. It doesn't need to be nasty and severe, but you know, you really need to protect your peace. And at nighttime, you want to make sure that before you go to bed, after every night I do this, I cut cords. So I just lay in bed and I just think about everyone I've interacted with during the day and I send all their energy back to them. And I call all my energy back to myself. And I always say in all time and space dimensions, and I just call all my energy back to myself and I just see like different ropes I would say around me and I just visualize uh, scissors coming through and cutting off all the ropes. And that's what I like to do. It just makes me feel that I, I have all my own energy and I'm not holding on to anyone's garbage. You know, sometimes we have interactions which really drain us or we have interactions where we just walk away not feeling right. There's certain people that I talk to that I don't have much of a choice because of um, my job and you know different media people. Not anyone in my in my Cosmo office, but you know different celebrities and whatnot. And I just don't get great feelings from them, and I can feel my 
my vibration lowering after communicating with them. So I always send their energy back to them, cut off that rope and call all my energy back to me. And also, you know, this is the time, and I really do think this is part of aging well, is just to be brave and to try out new things, get involved in the hobbies. If there's stuff you really want to do, stop the negative self-talk. You can make it happen. You can do it. There is nothing that you cannot do in your life. There is nothing that's better than you. And whatever it is, whatever you're thinking about right now, I say go for it. I went scuba diving um, earlier this year and that was something I was always interested in doing, but I would think, oh gosh, I don't know if I could do it. It seems scary or it seems like it, the equipment's too heavy or I don't think I'm gonna be able to breathe underwater. And I just said to myself, you know what, enough enough. I'm doing it. So I did it and I loved it. And now I'm going to get certified in it. And, you know, also being your own best friend for the longest time, I just wasn't my own best friend. I was like my own worst enemy, which is ridiculous because I'm such a great person. I should be my own best friend. And it took me a long time to get comfortable to a place where I could say, you know what? I really like me and I don't care who has said what about me. That's them projecting their own garbage onto me, which was a life lesson to learn. When people say nasty things to you, they're just projecting what's inside of them, their own negative, their own negativity towards themselves. They're just projecting that onto you. They're trying to throw that energy onto you, which is why you always cut your energy, cut the cords and you put all their energy back to them. You always got to do it. But, you know, it took me a long time to realize that actually I'm a pretty great person and I should be my own best friend. Why wouldn't I be my own best friend? I don't need to seek approval from anyone else. I approve of myself. And that is such a powerful place to be. And that's something that I wish all of us women were in that position right now. Because if we were, everything would change. Everything would change in the world. But, you know, what we can do is share that type of information on different mediums like how I'm doing right now on YouTube or you know you could do it in your office to the gal next to you in the cubicle or your friend whoever and you know it's really about just becoming your own best friend um also it's important to get involved in different things that interest you meet new people keep it fresh keep it active be discerning with who you meet you don't need to be friends with everyone you meet but sometimes you will meet someone and you'll just your intuition will say to you this person this is this is my person this is a great person for me and that could be the start of a very beautiful and fruitful wonderful friendship so why not and lastly is decluttering you know, one of the things I always say is the state of my house is my mental state. It, it directly reflects it. And right now I'm going into a big year. I'm launching something big and I need to be organized and I had to get rid of the clutter. So I did. And it's not just the clutter around me. It's the clutter in my mind. And there's things where I think about, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I said that 20 years ago. That's so embarrassing. You know, anything like that, you just got to let it go because you're the only one that's holding on to it. So that takes journaling, it takes practice. Letting go is not just a one-time thing. It can be like a spiral to really work on it and to really heal it within you to do a lot of healing, but you can do it. And when you do, you're just gonna blossom into this person that you've always been meant to be. So that's everything I'm doing right now to age well. I would love to know what you're doing to age well. And why not check out my morning skincare routine right here.